Good afternoon. Welcome back to the home of Newark Evangelical Church. Hope and pray that you've had a restful day and it's great that you can join us again for this afternoon's service. Let's just open this time in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we come before you once again, we can just once more do so with joy and thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, again, we perhaps have come to this time of worship, having enjoyed a restful day, and maybe that we've had to work very hard. Lord, either which way, we know that we can just take time away from that. And we can remind ourselves that although we may be struggling, and we may be coming to this time of, of worship, to this service, with great burdens and cares, and Lord, we know that we can just lay them at your feet. We can just come to you. Lord, where this world so often lets us down, this world so often fails us, and we so often fail others. Lord, where we are so often faithless, you are always faithful. And we thank you that, as Lamentations reminds us, great is your faithfulness. And Lord, we just pray that as we come before you this afternoon, we would do so with a humble heart, a joyful heart, a, thank, a thankful heart for all that you have done and what you are doing. And that we would remind ourselves that even though we may be in the positions we are struggling with whatever care and concern it may be, that you already know, that you are already taking care, you already have a perfect plan and you are working that out even as we speak. Lord God, bless this time of worship. And would you just help us, whatever circumstance we're joining from, to know your peace and your rest upon our hearts and minds now, as we meet together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who has given up everything for us. Lord, hear us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our opening hymn is exactly that. Great is thy faithfulness. A well-known hymn of the church been sung for many, many years. This particular version is from the Evangelical Movement of Wales, or the Abba Conference, and you may be familiar with it. So, as the words appear, and as the music plays, please sing along as you're able.
session this morning. We're going to be joined by Mike Smales this afternoon. Before we come into the Word of God and see what the Lord has laid upon his heart, we're just going to be thinking for a few minutes as Andrew catches up with him about where he is now and what he's doing. So here's a few questions that Andrew fired his way. Hi Mike, it's good to have you join us today. Could you remind us where you are and what you're doing at the moment? Thank you. Yes, it's great to be with you here this morning. Um, Sandy and I are down here in Christchurch. We moved here a couple of years ago um, to serve as one of the pastors at Lansdowne Church. And how have things been for you during this strange season under lockdown? Thank you. Yes, um, lockdown's been a strange time, hasn't it? Um, certainly it has for us as a family. We, we all six of us brought back together. Um, our eldest Josh has just been completing his finals um, here at home online. Um, and Sandy has continued to work um, in the hospital here. It's been a, a pressured time, but also a good one for her. And then for us as a church, like you, learning how to um, reach out to each other, uh, bless our communities and hold out the word of truth in Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for that, Andrew and Mike. We look forward to hearing uh, from the Word of God in just a few moments' time. Let's just commit that to the Lord and ask now that He would speak to us through His Word. Father, we thank You for Your precious Word. We thank You that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for us, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness, that we may be fully equipped. And Lord, I pray that as Your servant Mike brings this Word to us from Habakkuk, Lord, that You would speak through him, that it would be your words that you have planned and prepared to speak to us, and that as such, we would give it the due diligence that it deserves, that we would listen, not just with our ears, but with our hearts and minds, and that as you speak to us, we would be spiritually nourished and enriched, that we would go from this place satisfied and filled to the full, and Lord, take that word and use it and apply it in our lives that we may reflect more of who you are in our lives as your word guides and leads us by your spirit speak to us now in jesus name amen as crowds poured out of a smoking building a boy cried out for his dad where are you he knew he was there but he couldn't see him. It was terrifying. Habakkuk knew precisely how that boy felt. His world is full of violence, injustice on every side. Life in Judah in his day was ugly. Violence everywhere. The weak abandoned. And this was supposed to be God's kingdom. And so he cries out, chapter 1, verse 2, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you don't listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. God, where are you? Perhaps you've cried out like this too. God, where are you? As the world is turned upside down. Where are you in this day when injustice seems to grow on every side? The tragic murder of George Floyd wasn't the first, it won't be the last. Where are you as people are trampled by the proud? Where are you, God, as your kingdom today, especially in our land, seems to make such slow progress? Where are you, God, when everything in my life seems so upside down. Relationships creaking, unfairness common. Yes, even here in the church too. Where are you, God? And what are you doing? God's, as it were, making Habakkuk stand by on the sidelines and watch. And yet he seems to be doing nothing about it. Listen, verse 3. Why do you make me look at injustice, Habakkuk says to God? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There's strife and conflict 
abounds. And even God's word here it seems to be powerless. Verse 4, therefore the law is paralysed. Justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. The nation is swamped with injustice. Push against this tide? Not a chance. Maybe you felt the same. How can I live any different? How could it be any different? What is going to make the change? Will things ever improve? God, where are you? What are you doing? Do you know, it, it's okay to ask these questions. And right here, God gives us an answer to both. An answer that is so important that he urges Habakkuk to write it down on tablets of stone. And at the end, we find Habakkuk telling the musicians to set it to music. These things are to be sung. God wants us to hear and remember. When Habakkuk cries, God, where are you? He answers, stand back and watch. Uh, look, Habakkuk, I'm about to show you. Uh, verse 5, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. Stand back and watch. I'm going to do a work, Habakkuk, in your days, within your lifetime, that you wouldn't believe even if I told you. For I am going to do something in your days you wouldn't believe, even if you were told. Look, I have set things in motion already, Habakkuk. Justice is on the way. It won't stay like this in Judah. Listen, uh, verse 6. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings, not their own. Uh, at this moment, Babylon's conquest of the ancient world was already gathering place. I mean, it was early days, but it was already happening. That they'd already devoured the great cities of Assyria and Nineveh. They were on the march. I mean, in Judah, yeah, in the land, it didn't seem as if God was doing anything at all, even that he cared. But as God takes Habakkuk up and shows him what is really happening, from up here you can see the juggernaut of God's justice is already on the way. You see, whatever it looks like, God is doing more than you think. That's what God says to you and me when he asks us to stand back and watch. He says, I am doing more than you think. He's at work in today's corridors of power in the hearts of your friends, neighbours, colleagues. God is at work today in all of the details, in every circumstance, in every nation, in every situation, every boardroom, every family, every home, on every street. And he is using the events in our world today to call out to us, as he has been from the beginning. Turn back. Come to me, repent, seek me while I may be found. It's how he warned that northern kingdom of Israel, 150 years before this. You can read of it in Amos chapter 4. And it's the same way that Jesus warned his contemporaries when he walked this earth. In Luke 13, Following some natural disasters of his own day, he turned to the people and said, unless you repent, you too will all perish. Right back at the start of this pandemic, the church in Wuhan, China, demonstrated the love of Christ by looking after the dying when no one else would. Many came to receive life in Christ as 
into that context of distress. God's people stood up and proclaimed God's message. Turn back to me. Repent. In fact, one pastor preached at a funeral service of hundreds. He chose as his text Psalm 80. And he didn't declare, come to God for rescue. No, primarily, he said, come to God in repentance. Many were saved. Uh, 80,000 watched later online. And there are reports that many of them turned to Christ also. You see, God is doing in our world more than you think. And because of this, he says to you and me this morning, let your ears do the talking. Let your ears do the talking. Don't judge uh, by just what you see. Listen to me and understand what is really happening. You see, faith interprets what we see with what we hear. On the ground in Judah, uh, no one could have known. If you like, it was like you and me back in December. The virus uh, was already spreading. None of us knew, but it was happening. God knew. It was the same for Habakkuk in the days of Judah. You see, and it's as God speaks to him that he discovers what God is already doing. All Habakkuk could see was violence and injustice in the land. What he now hears is that, yes, God is still just, and what's more, judgment is already on the way. When life feels like a maze, with every turn getting narrower and darker, more confusing, more bewildering, God is standing on the gantry over it all, calling to his precious children, turn back, come to me, trust me, I'm here. And I am coming to put everything right, wait for me. I'm coming to get you out. He sees all. He's at work in all. And he is speaking to us today through it all. When you're weary and tempted to give up, he says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Hebrews 12, verse 3. Let your ears do the talking and you will keep going. When you're heartbroken and perplexed, lost and alone, we hear in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, Romans 8, 28. Uh, let your ears do the talking and you'll keep trusting. And when no one wants to listen to our message, when people turn their backs on us because of it, Jesus says to you and me, I am with you always to the very end of the age and you and I will keep on speaking. But as God speaks to Habakkuk, he grows more concerned. Why? Well, listen to the instrument of justice that God has chosen. He'd said in verse 6 that he was raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth. Now listen to what he says. They are a feared and dreaded people. They're a law to themselves and promote their own honour. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swooping to devour. They come intent on violence, all of them. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. You see, as God takes Habakkuk up to 10,000 feet and shows him, what does he see? Well, for Habakkuk, he sees something that he doesn't like. Not at all. And so his second question, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
I mean, Lord, I know I asked you to intervene, uh, but how could you do it this way? Using such a wicked nation. Uh, Verse 13, uh, why do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? Uh, But do you know the injustice, that's not his real struggle. How could the God he knows do something like this? Verse 12, Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute justice. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. Uh, Do you see his problem? He knows what God's like. He says, you're eternal. You're sovereign. You could have done things differently. Or the end of verse 12, my rock, you've ordained them to punish. I mean, uh, Lord, you're the rock. You don't change. If this is what's decided, it will happen. And what's more, I know you are holy. Verse 13, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You can't tolerate wrongdoing. Listen, you know what they're like, says Habakkuk, devouring nations, uh, scooping up peoples like like fish in a net and and then rejoicing in the depravity of their wickedness. And where will it all end? Verse 17, is he to keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? God, none of this is making sense. But in the heart of his struggle, Habakkuk reveals the genuineness of his faith. Did you notice it? He says, oh Lord, my God, my Holy One, what are you doing? I wonder, are you beginning to hear Jesus? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When nothing is making sense today, can you look God in the eye and say, my God, what are you doing? That's where our faith is really proved genuine. (laughs) And listen, he says, I will stand, chapter two, verse one, at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to his complaint. And then God answers. The Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. God's about to speak again. He wants it written down, permanently etched on stone tablets, carried out, declared to everyone. And God says here what? He says, Trust me, trust me. Uh, if it, as it were, he now takes Habakkuk up even higher, uh, 50,000 feet, and says, listen, Habakkuk, see what lies beyond. Verse three, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. There's an appointed time. An end is coming. An end for Babylon. An end for every nation that will follow in her footsteps. An end to all the chaos. But you're going to have to trust me, Habakkuk. You'll need to wait. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. But listen, trust me, justice will be done. And so with five dramatic pronouncements of judgment, we discover that Babylon will get what she deserves too. Listen to verse eight, to Babylon, because you have plundered many nations, the peoples who are left will plunder you. 
For you have shed human blood. You've destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Or verse 17. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you. And your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you've shed human blood. You've destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. And what good will their idols be to them then? This destruction, in fact, came on Babylon in, in, in just a few short years. It's a cycle for all that will follow in her footsteps. Those who are puffed up, verse 4, the enemy is puffed up, who are self-dependent, self-righteous, self-serving, Well, that's the heart that leads to the crooked living of verse 4. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. Well, that's the heart of the problem for Babylon. It's the heart of the problem for all who follow her. Puffed up. And yet, isn't it the heart of our problem too? Isn't it why our world is in such a mess today? Self-serving people, just like you and me. And, says God, those who live like this will get just what they deserve. Now, of course, it should include all of us, but in that same verse 4, God says to Habakkuk, not only trust me, justice will be done, but trust me, trust me and you will live. Trust me and you'll live. That's the great news of this verse. See the enemy is puffed up, verse 4. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Through God's faithfulness, those who turn will live. This is the good news, it's the gospel. Uh, Paul certainly thinks so. He repeats this very verse, not only in Galatians, but in Romans too. You see, up here at 50,000 feet, Habakkuk can see it all. But what he can only see faintly, the God who speaks, sees with crystal clarity. And as he speaks to Habakkuk, he looks on and he sees the cross. The events of that day on the ground would be more bewildering than ever, even more so than the events in our world today. Where God's instrument of justice would be far more barbaric even than Babylon. Where Rome's worst would be trained on God's beloved son. And as he cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God's justice would be complete. His righteousness then in his son held out to all. And so he turns to you and says again, trust me. I've dealt with everything. I've dealt with the heart, the problems that sit behind all of this. I have dealt with the world's problem. Will you trust me? And will you wait? And for one final time, he lifts Habakkuk higher still. And from this height, he can see beyond the cross. He sees beyond our day. He looks to the very end and he says, chapter 2, verse 14, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now he says, trust me, I am coming back. My glory will fill every corner of this earth. Well, as I sat in my study, it's a, it's a small room with just one window. It's high up. The, the other day, the, the sun was streaming through. It, it, was, it was lovely. I began to feel something of it. But it was only as I came here outside, as I stood 
in the full force of its rays did I really feel something of its glory. Well, as God speaks, Habakkuk begins to see the glory of the light of the gospel of God shining through that small window. As you and I now stand more fully, it's as if the window's been opened far more and we can see and know the glory of God in and through Jesus and his work on the cross. But there will come a day if we will wait for it, if we will linger, when you and I will stand in the full presence of the glory of God as his presence fills every corner of new creation. And then we will know that trusting it was worth it all, that waiting on him was the wisest thing in all the world. In that day, there will be no more distance, no more uncertainty, no more fear, no more distress in this world. In that day, all will worship. Verse 20, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth fall silent before him. Will you trust him? Will you, like Habakkuk, etch this message on your heart? And will you run with it like a herald? I can't think of a better time. Can you? Well, thank you, Mike, and for that precious word. We thank God for laying it upon his heart. And as we think about those words, as we think about that situation, as Habakkuk was in that conversation with the Lord and all that was going on, may we be challenged, like him, simply to trust, simply to depend um, and to wait upon God because he knows best and he has that perfect plan for us. We're going to sing some words along those lines now, our closing hymn with the words which will appear in a moment. It's Cornerstone, Christ alone is our cornerstone. Let's sing these words together.
thank you for joining us this afternoon. Just a quick reminder that throughout the week we've got the regular meetings, all of which can be found on Faith Life, and you can join in with each and every one of those. If you need more contact details, please either speak to me about the site, it's Dave Harrison, um, or speak to Pastor Andrew or Pastor Carl if you'd like to get in touch, join a home group, or be more part of the church. Until then, God bless and goodbye.